some years ago, I was at a youth retreat where they had now, a one of the great questions that people God the Creator should be obvious by the Gentiles. If you were looking down or Jesus from high lines of God the Creator. You'll notice that our chapter, this section, begins by talking about the unity of the body. And why is that? Well, you know, as soon as you get moving parts, you get friction. That's why we have synovial fluid in our joints, to keep things moving, keep things from seizing up. And, you know, if you don't ever have any interaction with other Christians, well, you get along with them just fine. When you start to work together, that's when the friction builds. And God knew that. He knew, he knew what he was working with, didn't he? And so he designed it so there was lubricant. And this lubricant is described for us here in this little section. Um, lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearance, and love. What a beautiful list of graces for the people of God. What is the big issue here? Why is it so important, this bit about unity? Well, the apostle explains it to us. At the end of the chapter, chapter three, he says, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, amen. That is called a little earlier in the chapter, verse 11 of chapter three, the purpose of the ages. This is the big idea, ladies and gentlemen. Glory for God through Christ by his people. Now, what does that mean in practical terms? Well, it means this, that God's invisible, but we're not. We're here in the world and the world has very poor ideas of God. God's had a lot of bad press and people don't think very highly of God. And so here we are as local representatives of God and the way we live, the way we act with one another is going to manifest the God we worship. And if we read the end of chapter three, we discover that there are three main things that are revealed through the church. Number one, the manifold wisdom of God. Number two, the power of the spirit. And number three, the love of Christ. These three have been committed to us so that in our daily experience, the way we treat each other, the way we go about our ministries, the way we live our lives before people, they are impressed with God because through our lives comes the manifestation of his wisdom, power, and love. That's the idea. That's what glory is. The outward, the visible manifestation of inward nature, the very nature of God, that men may see your good works and glorify your Father who's in heaven. That's the idea, isn't it? So our mission in the world is to give people good thoughts about God, that they might think well of God because of the way we live in the world. That's the great mission of the church, to win friends for God by the way we live, in dependence on his wisdom and power and love. <laughs>